Hello, I'm Frederick, lead software engineer at Nordson EFD. Today, I'm excited to introduce the Ultimus Plus NX 1 and 2, Nordson's newest additions to our Ultimus Plus series of dispensers. This state-of-the-art technology offers all of the features and benefits as the traditional Ultimus Plus dispenser, as well as complete remote connectivity and control functionality using the NX protocol via Ethernet. Now, our customers will be able to integrate Ultimus Plus NX completely with their PLCs or machines through their network setup, which will allow them to conduct all their actions remotely. Today, we're going to be talking about the Ultimus Plus NX capabilities and the software used to control it. Here on the right hand side, we have the web interface. And here on the left side, we have the Nordson NX client application. The purpose of the Nordson NX client application is to train uh, and introduce uh, our customers to the NX protocol. Uh, to start with, you'll need to download the NX client application from the Ultimus Plus NX website. Once it's downloaded, you'll have a zip file that you'll need to extract. Once you have the extracted folder, there's no need to, for any additional installation. You can just double click the executable and you'll get uh, a screen that looks like this. Once the application's open, you'll want to select Ultimus from the controller unit section. This ensures that the input and output table register names are accurate for your device. To connect to your unit, we're going to assume that you're already on the same network. We have a separate guide on network connectivity to help you establish a network connection. So I'll just type in the IEP address of my unit, which happens to be 192.168.10.59. Then you can leave the port as 9000. When I click connect, it'll display a message that says connection successful or connection failed in the case of a failure. The first thing I like to do to test our connection is to click uh, receive all values, which will receive all of the values for each register uh, from the unit. So you can see we have a digital value of four now in the output table. The diagnostic table shows what happened beside, behind the scenes where uh, we have our message log. So our client sent a message that was 3020. What that means is the three corresponds to a read command. So we're going to be receiving or reading the values from the controller. The zero indicates that we're going to be reading starting from register zero. And the 20 indicates that we're going to be reading 20 registers. So that means that we received from register number zero all the way through register 19 for all the values. Then you can see the server responded with repeating our command, the 3020, followed by all of the values in the output table. Now you can see some of these values don't quite make sense. Uh, for example, uh, dispense pressure of 5,000. Now that's a very large pressure, um, but you can see on the right, uh, it's actually a pressure of 50. And this is because we have a scaling factor uh, for some of our parameters. We didn't want to have decimals in our uh, transmissions back and forth because that makes it more difficult for PLCs. So we decided to scale our parameters uh, by, in this case, 100. So a dispense pressure value of 5,000 corresponds to 50 PSI. And the reason I know it's PSI is because our pressure units uh, say zero. Um, and the pressure units uh, are represented by a number that is found in the manual. So in the manual, it lists that a pressure unit of zero corresponds to PSI, a pressure unit of one corresponds to bar, et cetera. So let's put the correct system date and time in. For the system date, the year, 
2021, followed by the month, 12, followed by the day, which is 7, but we need to put in two digits, so it's 0, 7. Then the system time, it's now 2.29 p.m. So in military time, that's 14, 29, and then I'll add two zeros for the second. To send both of these values, I can use the send multiple area down below. For the base register number, I'll use 10, since that's the first register. And the number of registers I want to send is two. Then I can click the send multiple command and it will send those values. You can see in the message log that we sent a new command that starts with a 16. The 16 means that we're sending values rather than receiving them. Then the second number still corresponds with the first register that we want to send or receive, in this case, 10. And the third value still represents the number of registers, in this case, 2. Then, because we're sending values, what follows are the values that we're sending, separated by commas. And finally, we end the command with a semicolon. Then, the server repeats back the command. However, you'll notice that the system time did not change yet. To actually make this new setting take effect, we need to use the digitals register. We use the digitals register to apply all of the settings changes. The digital register is composed of different bits that represents set setting changes for different features. In this case, setting the system date and time corresponds to the fourth bit which is 16 in decimal. So I can type in a 16 here. And when I click send register zero, then the time updates. So that process did still take about two minutes. So we're now about two minutes behind. Uh, of course, when you do this with a PLC, you'll be accurate to the second. Now we could do a similar thing to change the program number. So if we wanted to change the program number to two, we can type in, in the program number slot two. We can send register one. And then for the digitals register, we need to type in a value of 64. And when we click send R0, now you can see that we've updated to program two. If we want to change the values in a particular program, we need to specify all of the values together. This is because we don't want uh, to have an accidental sort of mixed match program where some settings are what was left on the unit before and some are the new settings. So if we want to change Program number two, we'll need to fill in all of the settings uh, from one through nine. So for dispense mode, we can choose timed, which is one. For our dispense time, we can put in uh, half a second, which uh, because it's scaled is not 0 0.5, but instead is 5,000. Then for pressure units, we can leave it in PSI. For the pressure, I wanna put in a value of 15 PSI, which corresponds to 1,500 because of the scaling factor. We can leave the vacuum units as inches of H2O, and we can leave the vacuum off at zero. For our multi-shot count, we can have five with a multi-shot time, 0.1, which corresponds to 100. Then when we're sending all of these values, we can actually include um, register number zero in the same time 
if we want these setting effects to apply immediately. So to send a parameter change, we need a value of 32. And then we'll want to send uh, multiple registers, starting with register zero. And we'll send 10 registers. Now, when we send this, it should apply immediately. And there you can see, we've changed all of our settings. Now, there's one final thing I want to talk about with register zero. Because we just sent a value of 32, the bit 32 is still high on the system. And it only applies changes when a value goes from zero to one, which means if we'd like to change settings again, we'll need to first apply a zero to register zero before we can send the value of 32 and have it take effect. So if we want to increase our dispense time up to 0.6 seconds, uh, we can now do that by sending the multiple registers again, if we put it back to 32. However, if we had forgotten to reset the value back, uh, reset the value of register zero back to zero, then it would not have taken effect. For example, if I put this back to 0.5 seconds, if I send multiple again, it will remain at 0.6 until we send a value of zero on register zero, and then again, back to 32. And now the settings changes will take effect. The other interface that I wanted to talk about today is the web interface. To access the web interface, you'll again need to have your Ultimus plus NX controller on the same network that your computer is on. To access the web interface, you can type in the IP address, in this case, 192.168.10.59, followed by a colon, followed by 8088. And that will bring you to the web interface. This web interface should look fairly familiar because it's the same interface that you can see on the touch screen of the controller. It offers almost exactly the same functionality with a few enhancements. It allows for you to not only use the touch pad, but you can also use the keyboard to type in or edit settings. The other changes include the library import export, where rather than using a USB stick, you can directly export the library to your local computer. Here I've just downloaded my export, and then you can import a library just by browsing to the previously exported file. Similarly, you can download the dispense log directly to your computer, which you can see I've done now 10 times. Um, and you can also download and delete the log at the same time. And this ensures that each deposit is only recorded exactly one time. Similar to importing a library, you can also do a software update by uploading the files directly. And the final feature that is different is the system clock. Here, rather than having to type in the year, date, and time, you can just synchronize to your local computer time. So here we can make up those two minutes that we lost uh, while setting our previous with the PLC method. And now our clock is up to date. 
The final thing I'd like to show you today is downloading the log over FTP. You can use any FTP client to download the log. In this case, we'll use FileZilla. In FileZilla, you'll need to type in the IP address 192.168.10.59, as well as the port. The port we use is 9080, and then you can click Quick Connect. Once connected, it will show you a single file, the log.csv, which you can download by double-clicking. In this case, I already have a file, so I'm just going to overwrite. And that's it. We've now downloaded the log over FTP. I think that covers everything for today, so thank you for watching, and I hope this video helps you integrate your Ultimus Plus NX with your system. If you still would have any questions, please feel free to reach out.